That's good. I'm glad that it falls on you and not on me too. <laughs> I'll probably be able to, I'll escape out of there. Yeah, you will, bro. You'll be fine, dog. You'll win. Like, yeah, uh, you'll win an award at the end of the year. I'll get, they'll kill me. Yeah. They will literally come kill the me and my family. land of success. Everyone has one. See Wozniak with Apple. You know what I mean? That could be you. No, I don't. Why would I want that to be me, man? I mean, it's just how life breaks down. You know, most of the time, the things you want never happen. Why, yeah, I know. Why is it? <laughs> I know. I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that out from 2018 to 2022, bro. <laughs> All right, everybody, big news coming out of the Lion's Den podcast. We officially have our own merch that we're getting ready to put out. Make sure to go cop yours. Link is in the description below. These proceeds help us produce this podcast, bring on A-list guests, and these proceeds also help Penn State NIL as a whole. Go get yours and tag us on social media. We'll give you a shout out on the pod. Looking forward to seeing you wearing the Lion's Den merch exclusively. Welcome back, Lion's Den episode three. I'm your host, Aeneas Hawkins. I'm joined, as always, by the super talented Nick Dawkins, the Jerry Cross, and, of course, our special guest of the week, Theo Johnson. How are we feeling today, fellas? I'm feeling great, man. Feeling good. I didn't like that you stuttered before you said I was. I know, man. Talented. They can't all. They, well, listen. <laughs> sometimes when you don't believe what you're saying, it's <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> anyway, man, let's get right into this past weekend. Quickly recap that. A lot of big events, man. You played your most career snaps. Mm-hmm. First college football action. We'll start with you, dog. What was it like to be in the mix, man? Man, like at the end of the day, I've been working at, at this point to get to this level, um, to like playing level, and to finally have that come to fruition. It felt good to be out there. Like it felt, felt like I felt important out there. It really felt um, like I was part of something bigger than myself. So it was just the stuff that you work for finally coming together. And, and it's a lot of work that goes into. It. I mean, this is year mm-hmm. four. Man, year four. I didn't think it was going to be like this. Yeah, that, mean, you, and it's, sometimes when you come in, mm-hmm. you just don't know what it's really going to take to no. get to that point, man. But it happened. At the end of the day, that's like that's my journey. It happened, and now I'm out there, and it kind of gave me the confidence now going into the rest of the season that it happened, and like I know I'm ready for the moment. Yeah. Jerry, first first ever college snaps. After this, yeah. we'll go around. We'll start with Theo, and we'll talk about first college snaps and how those went. But what was it like out there for you? It, was, it hit different for me, but especially since last year. Like, I missed the whole season. I never got that chance. So just me, me being out there, just to see what it actually feel like to go against a different team. Like, I was, I was happy to just be out there. I was just taking it all in. Got my few snaps, and I was happy, man. Did you have a moment during the game that you'll remember, a play or an instance where you're like, okay, this got uh this got moving on me a little quick. No, not really. It's just like when you're just waiting to go in, like, you know, like when they sub me, you was like you just be ready, like, oh man, like once you get in there though, you're good. That's the big, the biggest thing for me is just waiting to actually get in there. You watching it from the sideline, like seeing him and Tyler coming in and out the game. When you actually get to go in there and see, like, oh, I'm on the field. Yeah. It hit you. Theo, I'm gonna ask you about about Jerry specifically. You got the the cool lens, the perspective of being the old head in the room now, which is crazy to say out loud that you're the old head now. That's really crazy. So you see your young guys in there in the mix. (laughs) What's it like? Uh, You know, it feels good, uh, especially with Jerry, because, you know, like he's a guy that just really works hard in everything that he does. Um, He's a guy that, like, if I ever, like, say, oh, I'm trying to get jugs up, I'm trying to get some work in, he'll never turn it down. So, like, Mm -hmm. when you see guys that, like, put in work, like, like people, like a lot of people, haven't seen the work that like Doc put in. Like, so it's good when you see guys that like really put in the work and like, like have done all the right things and like it finally pays off. And and even if it's just a little taste, even if it's just a little bit, it's like, it, it's a big deal. So uh, when I see young guys that that just got in here or been put in work for a little bit get in, you know, it's a good feeling, especially when when I know you know what it took to get to get there. Yeah, I'll pose this question to the to the unit after this, but. I can recall my first snaps at Penn State. We're playing Idaho, mm-hmm. and we're up, like, literally <laughs> 79 to nothing. And Spence finally looked at me like, all right, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's your time to shine. So we all go in there. It's like me and the scout team, D-line, I'm lit out there. And all week they're like, yo, if we get up, we're going to keep the calls real simple for y'all. Like, we know you just got here. Like, you don't really know the playbook mm-hmm. like that. We'll keep it real fundamental. We get in there, and the first snap of the game, Coach Spencer, who's now with Florida, looks at the field, and he gives the music signal. We had a call. It was uh-huh. music. It was strictly for vets, like, who had been there for years and, like, <laughs> knew the playbook. Mm-hmm. I will never forget the shock and the panic that went through my body when I seen that signal. And I looked at the other walk-on, yeah. the scout team guys, and looked at him like, what are we doing here? Mm-hmm. Nobody had any answers. 
running back hit his Go head off ball, the goal post. We let up the only touchdown of the day. It was 79 <laughs> to 7 after that. And then they benched us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <So>. yeah. <laughs> that was it. They put the unit above us back in the game. So I'll never forget that. Yo, Theo, when you, so you obviously got, you played when you was younger, like as a freshman coming in. What was your like welcome to college football moment? You know, I never had like a, like, I got, got hit pretty hard in, in the Illinois game. Mm-hmm. But like, I think the moment that I'll remember like so vividly is like when I really got in the game, like there's like, so Pat was here my freshman year, obviously. And like, he was a guy, like I kind of knew like it was Pat and then either Zach or Britton. Um, but then I eventually, you know, worked to to beat out Zach, and I was a three guy. But like I kind of knew the first couple of games, like I'm not I'm not gonna play. Um, but then Pat got hurt, Nebraska game, and then he he was pretty much done. So it's like going into the Iowa game, I'm like, okay, now like like I'm going to play, like I'm actually gonna play in this game. Um, and I remember first snap I get in, and I'm like in my stance, and I just look straight ahead, and I just see like a Iowa jersey, like. And I'm like, in my, like, I can vividly remember in my head, I'm like, I'm in the Big Ten. Like, yeah. I'm playing in the Big Ten right now. Good morning. Oh, yeah. I was like, yo, like, I'm really, like, lined up against the University of Iowa in a game. And and it was an empty stadium. There were nobody there. But it was still, like, such a crazy feeling, like, just knowing what it took to get there. Like, just all those thoughts going through my head. And then I remember first play I was in, caught a pass. Should have gone up the sideline, went straight back inside, got <laughs> dopped. And then they called the same play. I caught the ball, did the same thing, <laughs> literally the next play. And they're like, Theo, like, what are you doing? Like, just go up the sideline. But mm. I don't know. It, that was that was like, uh, I, I vividly remember in my head, like, oh, my God, like, I'm in the Big Ten. Like, mm-hmm. this is crazy. Yeah. Man, them COVID-19 days was different up here, though, for our freshman year. Like, we didn't get the authentic freshman year, but, like, there was good points to it, though, like stuff you don't get to see now. Like, man, we usually walk downtown. Like, we could go into any restaurant, and no one was in there. It was just like. Yeah. How, how was that, like, just y'all, like, having all that time off and then just coming back and being like, we got, we COVID, like, nobody here. I mean, we didn't think, I don't know. I don't know how you thought, but I didn't think we was going to play a season. I didn't either, yeah. So, so, like, they, first, when they sent us home, yeah. like, so what happened was we were doing winter workouts, mm. and um, me, and th- we, me and Theo early enrolled. With mask on, right? Yeah, yeah. Not no, 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 not before. This yeah, this is oh. So we're here. It's normal. We early enroll. I'm 17. Like, we're out here doing winter workouts. I'm like, man, winter workouts tough. They're like, okay, we're going to send you home for spring break, and they come back and do spring ball. And it was like, let slow down, because mm-hmm. it was like a joke. Like, I remember mm-hmm. one of the points, like, we're all circled up. Everybody's dead tired yeah. winter workouts. Somebody goes up there and is like, there's rumors going around <laughs> that we're not coming back from spring break. I want you to know that's not true. Yeah. And it's going to be yeah, spring yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So go ahead. So I'm at home in Allentown in panic mode. I'm like, yo, I got to play ball now. Like, I got to go block <laughs> these guys. I'm like, oh, no. So then they're like, um, we're going to give you know, two weeks. Um, so, you know, there's something going on on campus. With, you know, we'll give you all two weeks, and then we'll report back to you. So silently at home, I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm, like, I'm like, all right, I got some more time to prepare. I'm benching in the garage. Like, I'm trying to get right. I'm yeah, like, yeah. like nothing that's really going to help me. Because at this point, what's going to happen is what's going to happen. But I'm like, yo, I'm, all right, let me just get my mental right. And they're like, guys, it's going to be a little bit now. Yeah. Now we're doing Zoom, Zoom meetings, Zoom like learning the playbook. We had a whole new we had a whole new O-line coach, so Coach yep. Trout. Yeah. We had a new receiver coach and a new OC. Yep. So I'm like, That's crazy. and we had to install the playbook over Zoom. It's hard enough to get the playbook. When you come in, you know, get the playbook right away. Yeah. Now you're doing it over Zoom. It was tough. Yeah. yeah. So y'all had like team meetings on Zoom, all that. All of it. And That's you crazy. had, you were, you were even crazier because you yeah. couldn't even go back home. COVID was like really tough. So like all that stuff happened and everyone was home and I couldn't go back to Canada. Wait, so where like, were you at? I was I was here and they didn't even let like you couldn't stay on campus. Yep. So that hotel like right there, right above uh, the Target. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was standing there, and I was standing there for like three weeks. Yeah. And didn't leave like I did not leave mm-hmm. the room. Like I would order food to the room. I would do like, like workout like sit ups and mm-hmm. shit in the room, and I didn't like I literally did not leave that room. I left one time because they didn't have laundry service. Yeah, I went to Andy Mutton's house <laughs> and did laundry at Andy Mutton's house, and that was the one time I left. Like, and then my mom called me. She's like, "Yeah, nah, like it's just not healthy, like for you to be like by yourself for mm-hmm. so long." And then my brother at the time was uh, at the University of Buffalo. He came down, drove, picked me up, 
And then I was staying with him, and it was like, it was better. Obviously, I'm around my brother, but like, imagine like sleeping on like a Nittany Apartments like couch. No like, good. that's what I was doing for like probably like two months. Like, Man, body sleeping, was in shock. Sleeping <laughs> on like a couch, like in my brother's like on campus apartment. Mm-hmm. And I'm doing I'm doing the zoo meetings yeah. on, on the couch, the same place where I'm laying my head at night. And literally, <laughs> like, I had a good routine at that point, though. Like, we would wake up, do a little workout in the morning, mm-hmm. come back, do meetings and stuff. Then we hit the field, do, like, field work. Like, we were getting good work in every day, but, like, like that was it. Like, yeah. I would work out, and then I'd be on the couch, like, just do watching that. Netflix. <laughs> I got real good at video games during that period. I'm not because, like you said, we work out. Yeah. Then you got nothing wait, else to do. <laughs> what, wait, what video games are you talking about? Because you're not good at any of them. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm not going to do this. Crazy. No, that's a, no, that's the that. conversation. You see how you do? Like, this is the thing with Doc, bro. Doc's okay. never going to just let you live and enjoy. I am good at video games. Call of Duty. Yeah, they, okay, thank you. <laughs> exactly. There's no Call way. Silence. Yeah, golf, uh, uh, yeah, no, absolutely not. This is crazy. More importantly, Jerry. Okay. Recruiting process, COVID nineteen. You can't even go and visit a school. Were y'all doing like Zoom? Like, how are y'all getting in there? That was a blessing for me. Why is that, bro? So I played my freshman year, right? Mm -hmm. Had had a decent freshman year. My sophomore year was my breakout, like breakout year. I had like eight touchdowns the second game of the season. Mm -hmm. I was going crazy. So I remember I would come back to I come back to school my junior year at the beginning. So okay. it's like the first week of school. They're like, we're going to send y'all home because, you know, it's COVID going on and we don't want to get nobody sick. So we get sent home. We never end up coming back. So I end up just basically sitting out the whole – my whole junior year, I missed my whole junior year. I have no mm-hmm. fun. That's crazy. So one day, like – so Wisconsin, they offered me my freshman year. The end of my freshman year, they offered me. Then COVID ended up happening, of course. Yeah. So Michigan hit me up. All the other schools. All, the whole Big Ten, Pac-12, had. SEC schools, I had like over, I got like 25, 30 offers during that whole COVID period. And that's just me not having, just having my sophomore and freshman year of film. So that mm-hmm. was like a blessing for me, actually. Mm-hmm. Just the fact that I didn't, you know, I only played really two years of high school football. Really. Yeah. Like, that's what most people don't know. I, I, I really played two years of high school football. Junior year completely wiped out. My senior year I had a high school spring, so I missed majority of that season. Mm-hmm. I came to Penn State not having no end game experience yeah. since my sophomore year. Dang. So how did that affect your development here? It's like, How did you feel like you came in preparation-wise and were able to compete? I was just getting good work in, like, like the whole, the, over the whole, like, course of COVID, the summers, winters. Like, I was getting, like, good good work in. But just me just not having that game, in-game experience, like, my first team period in Penn State, like, at, in spring ball, I was like, like what's going on? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, the, the, like no, I remember Coach Howell put me in. Coach, Coach Howell put me in the walkthrough before winter workouts. You know we do a little walkthrough. Yeah. I line up on the wrong side and I run. <laughs> I pounded arced to the outside. He said, mm. "Get out." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Bro, this is crazy." Like how fast the game was. I'm like, nah, it's different. So by the time spring ball come around, I'm on my toes in my stance. I didn't know how to get in the right stance. Come off the ball, he slipped. <laughs> like I slammed to the ground. I remember that. Yo, you was I was, you was geeked flexing. up. I'm flexing. Yeah, I, I, flexing. Did, I, was, I definitely ah. remember that. I was geeked up. I'm flexing. <laughs> Coach Howell yelled at me, what are you doing? <laughs> you didn't take a first. I'm like, man, I thought I did good. I guess not. I definitely remember I that. I come out. It was just a rude awakening for real, right, right, really, like, because, you know, I have mm-hmm. no, like, experience. So mm-hmm. it was just a long journey. I'm still, like, just trying to get to mm-hmm. where I'm supposed to be for real, but. That's what the first couple of years here are like for ninety percent of the people that come in. Yeah, bro. Where it's just figuring it out the first few years. Theo, I want to get right into you know some of the things you alluded to in your last answer, basically saying like, you know, you're you're an international student originally. You're from Canada. Yeah. You're not even from here. Um, I know you got a giant family. Uh, it's well documented. Let's talk a little bit about your journey to Penn State. Um, and the things that it took for you to get to where you are today? Because a lot of people may not have that insight. Yeah, I mean, like, to not get super, super deep into it, um, you know, it was it's definitely a journey for sure. Um, you know, I came, got five brothers, single mom, um, kind of grew up uh, in poverty. Um, it, it was kind of tough growing up, had to share a bed a lot of time. Uh, it was six six boys in a, in a little house so you mm-hmm. never had no no privacy um it was days where 
I, I wish I was the only child. Like it, it was it was really tough growing up. Um and and people be saying like, oh yeah, y'all probably fought over food. Like if if you ain't at the table when the food came out, like sometimes you just didn't eat. Um so, you know, it was it was it was tough growing up and and at the time, like, you know, there's points in my childhood where I'm like, man, I hate this, like I wish I had a small family. Um, but you know, now being where I am now, like I'm so blessed that I went through what I went through because I wouldn't be like the man I am now, the player I am now, if I didn't, you know, go through some of those trials. Um, but you know, I was living in a town called Cambridge, Ontario when when we first uh kind of left my my dad and in that situation. Um, and that's when my mom went back to school. Um, she was doing school while taking us to football practice and making sure we're all going to school um, and getting to where we needed to go on time. And, and like, if you think about what it takes to do that for not just one kid, but, like, six kids, mm -hmm. like, we all was doing something, whether it's swimming, football, soccer, like, we was all doing something. She always made sure either if she was driving us, someone had a ride, she was, like, reading in the car when we was at practice, highlighting her books, um, and and just – relentless worker and that's kind of who I attest my my work ethic to is because she showed me that like there's there's no excuse to like like if you want some like there's yeah, nothing that can stop you other than yourself like like there's no there's no reason that like I, I could be here if it wasn't for like my mom's work ethic and and God like really honestly um so um do you find yourself now like clinging to old habits that you had back then like for example like, my godfather, how he grew up, he grew up. He said, man, they were so broke when the ice cream man came and played the music. His dad told him the ice cream man played the music because he was out of ice cream. So every time they came, they were like, oh, man, he's out of ice cream. They couldn't afford it. But he, like, when we're, we go out to eat, man, he looks around. Like, he'll finish all his food and then get, like, almost sick if people don't finish their food. You know what I mean? He'll start eating mm -hmm. off of other people's plates. Do you find yourself, like, clinging to some of them old habits? Yeah, you know, um, that's that's definitely a good, good way of putting it um, because – I definitely find find myself thinking like that, and sometimes mm -hmm. I gotta realize, like you know, like I don't gotta lick the the plate <laughs> yeah. clean every time. Um, but yeah, no, nah, I definitely like there's there's some habits I've definitely cling on to, mm -hmm. um, just like like good and bad things. If if mm -hmm. I'm being honest, um, and and it's kind of you know when when you get to to where I am from where where I was. Like you kind of just get in those habits and and you think like that's what got me here. Yeah. Whether it's right or wrong, like you kind of keep doing it because because that's what you've been doing. That's kind of how you got to where you were. Um, so with some of the bad habits, like um, you know, like I'm like really hard on myself like a lot of time, and mm. and I, I feel like you know like being so hard on myself is like why I got got to where I am uh, mm -hmm. now. And I gotta like I'm trying to tell myself you know like you don't have to be like so hard on yourself, like you can, you can be a little easier on yourself and still be successful. Like, but for so long, I thought like, I have to be like so brutal to myself in order mm -hmm. to like keep Where going. Go? Yeah. Um, and you know, habits like that, you know, I'm trying to break out of, but mm -hmm. there's, there's some other habits that are good, like saving money and, yeah, and, right. and, and treating, treating myself. Like I, I don't, I, I don't got stuff even though I'm in mm -hmm. much better situation now financially than I was before. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, no, I definitely, find myself clinging to some old habits for sure. But I think that I would say that's where you also get your leadership qualities from. I mean, when you, I think the confidence, I think, and you understand too, um, we talked about it last time on a podcast, but providing for your family, you kind of took on that responsibility. Even though no one probably told you you have to do this, now understanding like, yo, I have an opportunity to provide for my family. You're very pronounced like when you walk in, walk in a facility like when you talk to us in the team meetings and every like everyone stops and pays attention, you think also during that time that built up your leadership qualities. Like obviously you're a humble cat, you're not gonna be like yeah, but at the same time, you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like um, you know since a young age, like people always kind of said like what you said, like when when I walk into a room, like people kind of mm -hmm. notice me or, or or listen or whatever, um, and I never really like understood it and and kind of neglected that aspect of me for for some time. Um, but I think football really brought that out of me because, um, like, that was something, like, I remember first snap ever played in football, like, it was just, like, a click in my head. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, like, nothing ever felt so so real to me um, mm -hmm. than playing football. And I kind of knew, like, this is what I'm supposed to do. And then the leadership kind of just came out, too, because, you know, I was, 
I was making plays on the field, but I was also able to to kind of rally guys along too. Um, and and as I grew older, I realized that like that leadership quality is kind of rare. Like there's not a lot of people that that possess it uh, mm-hmm. naturally. Um, yeah. So I think that um, that's some that that I feel like I've had for a long time, and I've worked to to kind of develop more. And and I feel like that was kind of a dormant trait for for some time mm-hmm. um, because you know. I think we can all agree there's nothing worse than than someone that that talks a talk but Ain't but they're not walking the walk. Yeah. Um I think we can all yeah. name guys um yes, from all. teams in the past. Yeah. Um so you know I, I want to wait and and make sure that that I built up respect from mm-hmm. from the team before I, I kind of stepped into that bigger role and I think that um I feel good about how I've been doing it so far and and that's something that like every every day I try to be intentional with like you know thinking what am I going to do to like take another step in my leadership, whether it's like saying something else, mm-hmm. whether it's bringing someone else along, whether it's challenging somebody, uh, I try to just be intentional with that every day. I think, you know, when you look at the adversity that you had to deal with as a young guy and where you are now, one thing that you can kind of gloss over if you're not paying attention is that at some point when it didn't make sense to have that self-belief that you could go from point A to point B, which is where you are now, a big power five, college tight end with NFL aspirations, all those different things. Like you had to look in the mirror in those times of adversity and believe that. What do you attribute your ability to do that from a young age to? Is there a person? Is there an instance? Where did that come from? Honestly, if I'm being honest, I like, I never had a lot of confidence. Like, mm-hmm. like I, I, I honestly didn't have a lot of confidence. Um, kind of like I said, like I was like my worst critic. Like I, I really like, like I, I, I really beat up on myself, and and there was times where like, I gave up on myself. I didn't believe in myself, um, and 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 a lot of people didn't believe in me. Um, and I think, the 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 there's two people that that never gave up on me, even when I gave up on myself, and I, and I want everybody to give up on me, and and I kind of just was done with it all. My mom and God, mm-hmm. like, yeah. like I gave my mom every reason to give up on me, mm-hmm. and. And she never did. She never turned her back on me when when teachers told her, you got to just kind of let him figure it out on his own. When counselors, when specialists said, no, he, he's, mm-hmm. he's like, you got to just kind of let him be. And and she said, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm going to keep going. Mm-hmm. And, and God, like, I was a, a troubled kid that obviously had been through a lot. And, and I, I didn't have a lot of belief in myself. And I think it was just having, you know, people that truly never gave up on me mm-hmm. and, and believed in me, even when I didn't know why they should be believing in me. I think that's what kind of gave me the confidence to keep going and, and keep working. And then eventually when when you keep pouring into somebody, when they don't believe in themselves, they start to believe in themselves little and little by, at, at a time. And then I think um, eventually when I started, you know, taking strides in football and and gaining more confidence, you know, I, I can do this. Like, I, I can play at a high level. I can play mm-hmm. in the States. I can accomplish my goals. And I think it's just kind of started to build from there and 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 blossom. Um, but I definitely attribute that to my mom and God, for sure. And Jerry, being in his room, how have you seen his, like, leadership develop as you've been here? <laughs> Man, just me coming in from a just a recruiting standpoint, like, I remember first my scene Theo, like, I, know I always looked up to him, like him and Brendan and Tyler, like, mm-hmm. I always looked up to them. So just seeing that. Just him being a leader for our room, he, like, pushed us to get to where we want to go. And, like, even I feel like, I don't know, he's had a big Im- impact on our room and on our team. Like, yeah. like I said, it's somebody I look up to. Like, he to help me through stuff. Like, it have been times where I haven't been down, man. Like, mm-hmm. I talked to him, and, you know, he just, like, he, he helped me get back to where I need to be. Like, so I just, I really do appreciate him because he really helpful for me, for real. For real, for real for man, there's just so many cats like that that, that you see that you would never know where they come from, their circumstances, because of how they portray themselves and how, you know, they show themselves to people. But, man, that's the reality of it is, like, the toughest guys like that, I think all of it comes from those external factors, which is obvious, like, you know, pressure builds a dime, pressure builds a king. Um, But, like, man, like y'all two, like, just I feel like everyone here, like, and, like, guys we bring on, wise beyond our years. Like, his mindset and, like, your mindset and your mindset is just way beyond, like, and I mean, just, like, ran on about it, our locker room, how yeah. different it is as we've been here. Man, you see guys' visions. Everything is intentional. Everything has a plan. And I don't think you see that when you go into other locker rooms and 
in the country that everyone, it's a genuine support system that we're building up with I each just, other. I feel like it's, it all just come back down to your, your background too, like your mm-hmm. upbringing, like parents, like his, his mom, my mom, your mom, your, your dad, your mom, like it's just your background. Like if you raise a certain way, you're going to carry that for the rest of your mm-hmm. life. So I feel like that's really what it start with for real. Sometimes that's all it takes is one person that you look up to, you respect for whatever reason it may be, whether it's a mother, whether it's a mother and a father, whatever it may be. Sometimes that's all you need. Because yep. as a kid, it's not, it's not always easy to believe in yourself. Yep. You're making mistakes. You got people telling you this, you that. And you don't know no better as a young dude. You let people speak into your lives that really have no business doing it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So sometimes having that one or two people in your life is really big time. One thing I want to ask you about too, Theo, you know, you, you've alluded to Pat Fryermuth a couple times, him being around when you were a young player as a, as a freshman. And I think it's interesting to always ask, you know, like what was the toughest hurdle when you got to Penn State as a player that you had to overcome uh, when you first got in? Um, so definitely the big thing for me is probably five days on campus, I had surgery. Um, so already being a kid from a different country, playing a totally different game. Like, people sometimes forget, like, Canadian football is different than American football. So I'm coming to a different country, playing a different game, and then I have surgery five days into being on campus. Um, so that was definitely probably the toughest thing for me is, like, and, and not only being in a different country, like, being in college. Like, I'm not getting eased into it in summer. I'm thrown into a full course load in, in the spring. Yeah. Um, so... That was that was definitely probably one of my toughest semesters, just because, like I've never I never was hurt until I had my sh- like shoulder surgery. Like that was the first time I ever been hurt in my life. So just navigating how to be injured, how to kind of still navigate stuff, and then making sure I'm still taking care of my body, going to class, trying to learn a playbook for the first time. Um, so that was like super super challenging for me, uh, just because there's so many firsts that I was going through at that time, um, like. It, it was just I, I felt like I was kind of just my head was on a spiral all the time, um, but I think that COVID was good because it slowed everything down for me, mm-hmm. um, and I was able to focus more on on learning the playbook and kind of getting accustomed to things more. So then by the time we came back, um, it, it wasn't as much of a, a learning curve as it might have been if I was in, continuing through the spring, um, and then ultimately. I was at the point where, where, where even through the surgery, even through all the, the things I went through that first semester, I was able to still um, excel enough to be able to play my freshman year. But uh, my freshman year, definitely probably the most adversity I had um, since I've been here, and that says a lot. And you even talk about that surgery sleep. We all know it, man. That's yeah. the worst sleep ever. Yeah. No. Yeah. And you was getting it in the Martin Ball, uh, in the Martin Hall beds in too. The, in the <laughs> twin XL, the twin, twin XL, XL bed. No, that's the worst sleep ever. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Surgery Terrible. sleep is crazy. Surgery sleep is crazy. You remember when? Uh, quick side story here. Shout out Tyler Elsden. You remember I had a uh, so I had a tibia surgery <laughs> my last nah. season. Elsden, we lived in the yards. Elsden had the room on the first floor, and I couldn't get up the steps. So Elsden went out of town and was kind enough to let me sleep in his bed. Now you know you have surgery. They give you all kind of pills for the pain, so you're like not <laughs> like you're just not all the way there. So I had slept in Elsden's bed because he told me, and I didn't realize it. My head started bleeding through the uh, like the wrap oh. <laughs> on his bed, Yo. all over like in his Whoa. bed, like and I had, I had no, I was so high out of my mind from the oxy, the oxy they was giving me for the surgery. I had no clue. What else did almost came upstairs. Shout out Doc for slowing him down because he was gonna wake me up out of my sleep and fight me. <laughs> with a broken I have leg. never seen him that mad before. Yeah, like, nah. I mean, I I get it though. When you have your own den, you have your own room. And the hawk burrows himself and builds <laughs> a hawk. hawk's nest in your room oh, here he goes, with man. McDonald's DoorDash. Oh yeah, I was and dried blood on crazy. cheeks. Yeah, yeah, that would that would drive a man to insanity yeah. as well. It's understandable. Yeah, yeah, I mean, certainly you understandable. You got it. You understood the point. You kept yeah. your distance. I did. I, I avoided Elsa <laughs> for like four days. <laughs> I'm like, bro, if I see it with one leg, it's a problem. Let's uh, let's circle back though. We got two of y'all here, so I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about it. But I've been here for five years now. I've seen the Aces. Um, in various forms, from Pat Fryermuth, Nick Bowers even, guys like you, Tyler, Zach Kuntz, who's now you know a guy chasing the NFL. It's been a bunch of talent in that room. You guys have maintained and upheld a standard of excellence to now people are talking about y'all as potentially the best tight end room in the country. As a leader of that unit, what's that experience been like? I think um, 
you know, I knew coming in that there was like a long lineage of of tight ends that came through um, Penn State. And I took a lot of pride in that. And that's part of the reason why I chose to come here um, because, you know, obviously I wanted to go somewhere where a tight end was an established position in the offense. Um, so I knew that there was a standard um, that that was set. And, and I tried my very best right away to try and acclimate to that. Um, so, you know, as a freshman, I kind of went and, and looked to Pat and, and kind of just was trying to be a sponge with everything, see how he works, um, see what his work ethic was like. Because cause this is a guy, like, he's going to NFL next year. So, like, I'm trying to see what he does because obviously me, I'm trying to do what, where, where – I'm trying to go where he's going. So um, kind of looking at him and seeing what the standard was like um, and then ultimately, you know, kind of making it my own. Like, obviously, it's not going to be the same every year. Um, and and everyone that's came through through here has kind of put their own touch on it and, and changed it. And, um, things of the dynamic has changed from uh, Jesse James and Kyle Carter and all those guys to, to where we're at now. Um, but I take a lot of pride in uh, the standard that, that this tight end room has. And that's part of the reason why, you know, I'm all over the guys, especially the young guys, because um, it's it's bigger than it's bigger than like us. Yep. Like, like we're doing this for the guys that came before us, and then we're doing this for the people that are gonna come after us. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I, I I wanna I wanna be able to look back when I'm gone and and see the room better than than when I was there. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, I take a lot of pride in that, and that's part of the reason why like I, I push so hard to to uphold that standard. Jerry, what is that eight like the aces? What did that mean to you? This is a group of guys that can do everything. Like we actually do everything. Like I remember one time after a scrimmage, me and Theo and, and Rap and Khalil and Tyler was all talking. We was like, like tight end is not an easy position to play. Mm-mm. Like it's not people like don't realize. Like when I look at the quarterback, I think like we second to the quarterback when it comes to our load what we gotta do. Because even when we change the playbook or something, like we the ones that have to make that adjustment and that change. So like when I hear the aces, I hear just a group of guys that's asked to do everything at a high level. Like he said, like our standard is set, like out of the like through the roof. Like mm-hmm. we're expected to do the hard jobs, but perfect them and like you know set the tone for our team. Now, would you say that you're a part of the trench association? Would y'all say you're closer to a receiver or closer to no. an offensive lineman? Uh, offensive I don't want to hear no mid uh, uh, offensive receiver. lineman. Nah, you say nah. you're closer to O lineman. I yes. mean, they was calling me Theo Fashanu after. <laughs> nah, nah. Nah. <laughs> Who is they? <that? laughs> <laughs> after West Virginia game. <laughs> they, yeah, who's they, though? Like, I want to hear it. You got to drop a name or something. I'm not – I'm, I'm going to dismiss that one. Don't ever say that again. <laughs> yeah. That's, done. that's, that's, that's definitely done after today. I'm going to consult Olu about that, too, tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure that's dismissed. You got to address that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not liking that in the brick nah. squad room. No, nah, we're done with that. On that note, though, I mean, you guys do have to do everything. You got to mm-hmm. run routes. Yeah. You got to be able to block. Mm-hmm. You're blocking a lot of DNs, and – I laugh about it. I used to love watching it on film when, like, y'all would get in your stance and, you know, you got, like, some type of split flow or something. You got to go back and block an end and, like, watch y'all peek real quick at who you got to block. Is there a D end on the team at any point in time that you've been at Penn State? Who is the guy that you get your stance and you look over and you're like, damn it. Like, all right, here we go. It's a collision coming. I mean, I think we all know. <laughs> I think we all in this room know. Uh, I mean – I mean, oh boy, me, man, over me. Coming, for your, coming for your life. <laughs> Unanimously. Why, why I mean? He doesn't care. Like, I mean, just like, you you, you running, you on a split flow? He running high, full of speed, like just throwing his body at you. Like, I mean, is a different breed, bro. And I tell you. Yeah, I'd say that's a definition bro. of a of a crash dummy. And another <laughs> dude, another dude, my freshman year was uh, Jason Owe. Come on, dog. Come I on. remember uh, like a lot of guys, probably not a lot of guys on, on our current roster like probably even mm-hmm. remember him, like just actually being here. Uh, but I remember my freshman year, like when I was in training camp, like Tebow was trying to see what I'm like about, like because, you know, I was doing pretty good. <coughs> and we were inside running. He's like, all right, like, <laughs> like Theo, get up. And it's Jason. And I actually like – I held my own against him mm-hmm. and – like I don't know if I won the rep, but like <laughs> it, it would definitely for a freshman. Like it was a good it was rep. solid. Yeah, yeah, it was a good rep. And I think that's for me when I was like, okay, you know, I can, I can definitely hold my own in this league. But um, I I don't know how many other times I can say that. Yeah, Oway is I one of them guys. Him. He's one of them guys that you got to watch, man, because he's six five, two sixty, but he's running like in at his best when he was here. 
I watched him run a four three six. Like I watched that. It was like watching a horse. Four or five percent body fat. Yeah, That's he's crazy. he's yeah, built yeah. like a Greek god, bro. And when guys guys running a four three six like that, you know when he's playing, he's playing faster than that. Yeah, I don't care what people say. When you have that adrenaline pumping, you're moving faster than whatever that forties. There's guys that are just gamers that mm. can just move different yeah. when they're on the field. Like Chop Robinson is a prime example for that, bro. He can move. Man. If you see him he come off, more. if you see him come off the ball, like his pad level do not change. Like he just come off low. Like mm-hmm. he's crazy, bro. Just watching him play and practice, like actually going against him, is, is wild. Yeah, he. So I, let's talk about it because I didn't get to play with Chop. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I watch him on film, yeah. and he's super <laughs> impressive, especially as a pass rusher. But he's like. He's got something to him in the run game, too. He comes off with good leverage, good with his mm-hmm. hands. He's a guy that's, you know, living up to the hype in your mind. Yes, definitely. Like, what people don't realize, like, when it's first, it's like the first the first year he got here, he was, like, 235, 240. He wasn't even, like, that big. But now he's, like, 250, 255. And, like, he's just getting better and, fat, like, bigger, faster, and stronger. So, yeah. It's- yeah, nah. I mean, Chop has developed a lot since, like, I remember when he was – we played him at Maryland freshman year – I, I didn't think like, like he was he was a solid player, but like mm-hmm. seeing what what he was before and what he is now, um, and like I've been in the Big Ten for a long time. I've had to block a lot of really good DNs, mm-hmm. and like I'm good against like big like a, a big DN. Like I, I I like my leverage over their leverage. I can get low, but like some about chops pad level like and and yeah. and how Tell he you. can fire off so mm-hmm. low and maintain it through the block. Like it, it's it's one of the most challenging like uh, like the ends that I had to block just because of that. Um, so you know he he's got a good thing going. He's been doing a lot of really really good stuff. If they don't give y'all y'all flowers in the past game, if, if next time y'all are watching the game, watch them line up in that stance and hold down <laughs> a DN and pass pro for more than four seconds. We got tackles doing that all all game. And then they walk in there, catch a touchdown pass, and then go do the same thing. Yeah, they got to give them the flowers for that. Gotta That's get, crazy. Got to give the aces their flowers. Mm-hmm. Got to. How hard it is to be a tight end, bro. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's difficult, if, bro. We can go through like all like you can go through all four seasons in in a, in a drive. Mm-hmm. You can start yeah. with you can start with <laughs> all four seasons. You can start with you can start with a uh, damn duo, <laughs> and then next thing you know, we're running four verticals, <laughs> and then we got max protection, <laughs> pass pro, and then you gotta. You do our walleye package or, or our short yards T mm-hmm. formation package, <laughs> so so you can really like like that's a good thing about being a tight end here because you know a lot of schools like like you're only asked to like some some dudes are just glorified receivers at tight end mm-hmm. and the other dudes it's just you're just a tackle like you're you're literally <laughs> right. just an extra lineman yeah um, so that's a good thing about being here like like we're able to display all of our capabilities mm-hmm. um, which is which is obviously good and especially for. Trying to play at the next level, you can show all your all your talents. Dude, that T formation is our identity. You can't That's stop crazy. It. You can't I'll, stop it, bro. I was gonna ask about that. Do y'all? Bro. I love when y'all come out that T <laughs> formation because y'all are at like a hundred percent success rate. Like, do y'all Dude. line up as an offense when you get in that T formation? Like, yeah, like Dude. it's time. It they just, know it. We know we it. We know it. Yeah, <laughs> you know it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> right. Nothing. I like that. I don't know if I've ever had as much confidence with like a like I line up and it's just like. I'm just already like it's it's damn near a breather for the next play. Like, it, it's it's automatic. Like you don't even have to think like about what it's okay. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm at this side. I got this. Mm-hmm. That's where I'm going. Backside. I got this. And then looking at the sideline for the next play because we got the first down. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's automatic. Yeah. One thing we got to talk about it, and I made a note of this to talk about it because I when I would see you two walk in a room together. No matter what type of day it was, I would always get excited. But you and Tyler Warren have always been like, like wait, partners wait. in crime. Excited. I like, get. What I, do you mean? I would get excited <laughs> because it's hey, like, what are you getting excited for though? Because I'm, like, I'm like, I'm in the room. <laughs> like, like, what's going on? What are you getting? But there's a lot of reasons I'm excited when okay. Theo and Tyler Warren walk in. But the primary reason being, when you guys are together, it's like comedy if you're just paying attention at all. And you guys have been like that since the day you walked in. You guys are both in a position now where you've earned significant reps. You guys are playing together. There's a lot of 12 personnel where I see you two out there, again, being partners in crime. What's that relationship been like through the years? I think it's been super, uh, super unique. Like, you don't see a lot of time in in such a competitive sport that, like, like obviously guys have good relationships, but, like, at the end of the day, 
like it's one pot that, that everyone's trying to eat out of. Like we're we're all trying to get ours, and and we're all competitors. Like yep. I'm I'm competing against Tyler every day. I was competing against Pat. I was competing against Brenton. So we're competing against each other. But at the end of the day, like we know, like the main goal is like we want to win. Like mm-hmm. we want to win games. And then we also know too, like at Penn State, if you show you can play, you're gonna play. Like whether it's 12 personnel or 13, like last year. All three of us were getting like meaningful reps, like me, Brenton, and Tyler. So like, I think that helps with with our relationship because we know like you're gonna make plays, I'm gonna make plays. I'm still competing with you, but like, I'm not taking nothing away from you. So I think you know me and Tyler from from freshman year, like it, it definitely wasn't what it is now. Like there's probably still a lot of that competition and 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 stuff like that. But when we realized that <coughs> when we realized that. You know, we can compete and still, like, be friendly with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that helped us build our relationship. And now, like, he's probably one of my best friends on that team. We, we do a, a whole bunch together. And and it's it's honestly probably better playing with somebody like that because, you know, I, I completely trust him. Like, if I got him next to me, I know that he's going to do his job. He's going to help me do my job. And I think we just make each other better every day. And Jerry um – he said um, he gets excited when he sees Tyler Warren and Theo walking in, in the room together. Who who you think is more of exciting of a group though? Me and Hawk walking in a room or Tyler and Theo? Like who are you taking? Tyler and Theo. Oh, you're okay. crazy. That's, uh-huh. You're crazy, yeah. man. That, that just shows yeah, that you don't have any right. sense, man. You just let the world know <laughs> I'm Jerry Cross and I don't know how to evaluate talent. Yeah. No, <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. Like you just lost a you, job. You and Hawk are like y'all hilarious, but like Tyler Warren and Theo together. What does that it mean? It's like, hilarious. And then like, you add Liam and Bo to that? Oh. And Dom? Right. Nah, it's now not we're losing Dom. Liam yeah, and Bo? Yeah, it's, yeah it's buddy. Bro. Don't, don't, let me, add, like, don't let me guys. be out, too. Don't let me be out. <laughs> no. <laughs> See, we haven't even talked about, like, we got PJ with us, man. You no, add, I'm not going to lie. That's, that's a good one. I'm not going to lie. That's good. Bro. It's yeah, over, that's man. We just cut with a Hershey kiss, man. Come on. Come on now. That's a, di- that's a talk- different what are, you, what? what are you talking about? I don't know. We done got off on a we, tangent I'm quick. I apologize. Let's get back to business. I'm going to ask both of y'all. Uh, because he's a guy that I've been really impressed with. I was here back when he was a offensive line GA. But Ty Howe is, like, one of the best dudes, I think, in college football. Like, he's a quality guy. He's a coach that cares about his players. I never explicitly played for Ty, or, uh, Ty Howe, but he's always been a guy that I knew had my back, would check in on me, ask mm-hmm. how my day was going. What's that dynamic been like, and how is he as a leader? He's still that same guy, but, like, you can ask Coach Howell for anything, like off the field stuff, on the field stuff. Like he's just a real genuine guy, and that's what like I feel like most coaches around the country might not have that same aspect. Like I know if I need something, I could call him and he's gonna deliver for me because he's just that type of coach, and like, he's just that type of guy. Like mm-hmm. I got a ton of respect for him, and I know he do for us, uh, like an all in the room. But Coach Howell, he's one of the most genuine coaches. Like even when it comes to sending us the install or the script, like we had the fall camp day one script probably three weeks before camp started. Like, he'd take care of us on the field and off the field. <laughs> I say, um, so, Ty, me and him, me and Ty's relationship probably started even before he was my coach. Um, so, freshman year, he was working with the O-line, <coughs> and uh, Coach Bowen at the time, who was a tight end coach, told me, like, you know, if you want to play, you're going to have to block. Like, yeah. like that's, that's the only way you're getting on the field is if you can block. So that was, like, what I poured all my energy and effort into. And I would be after practice hitting the sled, and Ty would come over and, like, just, now you got to do this. Give me pointers and stuff. And then eventually, you know, we started to build a relationship, and it was more than just, like, just talking about run blocking. Like, he would just talk to me about, like, you know, going through uh, a little bit of that transition I alluded to earlier in the conversation, just talking about, you know, playing a different sport, uh, navigating just being in college. Um, so before he was even my coach, we had built a pretty good relationship. So then when Coach Bowen went to the Jaguars, it was kind of a seamless uh, transition. Mm-hmm. And then it honestly just kind of really took off from there. And, you know, it was probably one of the best things to happen in my career was just having not only a coach that, um, like, I can relate to and, and have a really great relationship with, but, like, Ty is, like, I- I'd say one of the hardest working – coaches um like he he makes sure that we are so prepared uh to play every single day um he goes above and beyond like there's 
so many things that like he does for us in the tight end room that like like you just look at other position groups like yeah like our coach isn't doing that for us and and that's mm-hmm. not no knock on their coach but like Ty just he, he he's a grinder he works really hard and that goes back to when he was a player like mm-hmm. he, he was just a hard worker so uh, I think some of his you know work ethic and mentality is, is rubbed off on us and and has kind of it shows in in our unit and and I think that we've kind of taken over some of of that identity that he he take he brings to the table. So, um, yeah, and no, I, I think he's probably one of the best coaches I've had in, in my career. And it's evident, you know, when we when you watch Penn State play, guys are putting out effort. They're doing what they're supposed to do. And, like, particularly you leave it out on the field. When you get home, you know, after maybe a loss, something didn't go the way you wanted to go, how do you balance out, you know, the negativity and the hate maybe on social media or just in general? How do you balance that? Yeah, it's tough. Um, I definitely wasn't always good. Mm-hmm. Um, at at kind of dealing with that stuff, mm-hmm. uh, especially like after if 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 I feel like I didn't play or, or play as good as I could have or I dropped a ball or something, I don't even go on social media because yeah. like, I know like it's it's I, I'm not gonna see something that I want to see. So man, they gonna give it to you too. Yeah. man, so they don't, don't play around. <laughs> I don't go on social media. Uh, I try to stay off of it because you know it's just not it's not gonna help me. Uh, mm-hmm. I think the big thing for me is just. Going over the film and just really just kind of being just ev- everyone's gonna see what I'm looking at. Like I'm gonna have to face music in in the offensive unit meeting, so I, I just gotta look over it, see where I made the mistakes, mm. and then just try and grow from it. Um, and and it was definitely a lot harder when I was a young kid. Mm-hmm. Um, just you know not being as honest with myself or um, just it was a lot harder to face that music. Uh, but I think now like. Um, it's it's a it's a lot easier transition to kind of deal with with disappointment in that way. And Anise, how do you balance it after like a bad dirty show? Like how do you balance <laughs> that? <to think? laughs> See, it's funny. So my biggest ops weren't typically the fans. You know what I'm saying? They never saw me play. But we get to film sometimes. I would have a rep so bad that like the D line coach <laughs> would play it twice. He'd look at me. Wouldn't say nothing. It would just move to the next play. And, I, would, you know what I'm saying? My biggest – I mean, that's, it's a bad feeling. Yeah. Um, I will say one time I had a fan tweet on me. We were at Ohio State. I'm from Ohio. And I was wearing number 27 in honor of my dad who wore 27 in the NFL. I'm just trying to show love to my pops. You know what I'm saying? He did a lot to help mm-hmm. get me there. So I'm wearing 27. I'm like 305. I'm a one technique. And some fan from Ohio State tweets at me a picture of myself stretching in the warm-up lines and says, you are the fattest 27 in the history of college football. And I couldn't even be mad because I'm like, bro, might it's be creative. on to something. And he's on it. You can't get mad at the creativity. I can't. That's the thing. If you're going to tweet at me negatively, mm-hmm. you better be on it. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I have a standard of excellence in the comedic realm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'll, 100%. I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. When people, yeah, when people give you creative insults, I got to respect the game. Like, yeah. I got called medium ugly. I was like, <laughs> but then when I got to go home and ask questions about it, uh-huh. but they won. It right. got me. I'm asking, yo, my medium ugly? Right. People, and people aren't giving me straightforward answers. Yeah. Now I'm in panic mode. Right. Now, now people now start breaking eye contact yeah. when you ask the question. That's how you know, man. They won't look at you with your eyes when they answer. Can't buy it. Last question I got for both of y'all, really, but Theo, I mean, you specifically, Mike Yersich, uh, you know, he's back third year. You're already smiling. I mean, I just want to know. I didn't play for Coach Yersich. You know what I mean? I was on the defensive side of the ball. At that point in my career, I'm like not even relevant at all. We're not talking a whole you, lot. You get some old offensive reps in, though. No, we don't just tell that story. <laughs> we will tell that story real quick. So I was coming back from injury my last year. They're like, yo, we need, like, look team tight ends. <laughs> like, like, what's up? Sir, Dan Macy, too. So, yeah, so it was me and Macy competing for the spot. <laughs> <laughs> We go over there. I take water. I've never played tight end in my life. I got not a clue what to do. I look at Grayson Klein, who was another walk-on tight end. You know, Grayson don't take nothing serious. So I'm like, yo, what do I do right here? He's like, first of all, I try to go to the other side in the formation. He's like, nah, nah, nah. Trust me, you won't be on this side. It's going to be easier. Set me up crazy, <laughs> right? Yep, so I'm, again, right. we talk about split flow zone. I look over, Jesse Lucetta's on the other side, and I got to go get him. I'm thinking, <laughs> okay, me and Jesse are in the same class. He's going to take care of me. Like, we're good. Like, we'll have a little collision. He'll keep me up. I, whatever. <laughs> when I tell you Jesse Lucetta hit me so hard, dog, my helmet popped off, and Dion was running the scout team office. He's like, bro, get out and don't go back in. <laughs> and I stood there the rest of the practice. I don't remember what the point was before that, though. You didn't got me off on a tangent. Coach Yersich. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, let's get back to it. You're not avoiding the question. What has he been like? Obviously, the offense – 
is having a ton of success. You guys all look so comfortable in it. How has he been as a coordinator? How's that relationship gone? I think, uh, you know, when he came in, his style of play was so much different than my freshman year, um, just how he calls plays. Um, the tempo was was so fast our freshman year. Um, we kind of reeled it back a little bit. Um, he, he's, got a, he's got a fire to him. He's got an edge to him. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I'll tell you one thing. The dude is brilliant. Like, he is – the way his mind works, he's super smart when it comes to uh, breaking things down and how he can – uh, explain things and and dissect coverages, um, and and it's it's showing up this year. And some some coordinators it takes some time for all the pieces to come together. And I think we got all the pieces this year. Um, and he's done a really good job of taking all of our weapons and being able to uh, use them in the right way and and be able to play to Drew's strengths and and our offensive strengths and kind of be able to self scout and say what's what's our strengths. Uh, so you know I think. Yursic has been a, as a really good coordinator, and, and kind of like I, I said before, um, it's fun playing in his offense just because, like, if you can do it as a tight end, you're going to be able to display it. And, like, there's a lot of schools that, like, you don't get the opportunity to show all of your aspects. Um, so I think that's probably the thing I like the most about playing in his offense. Jerry, how did you, with picking up the playbook your freshman year, how did, how, did you have any resolve when you were going through it? I say for me, like just picking up the playbook wasn't really hard. For me, it was just translating to the field because mm -hmm. I'm a fast learner. So in the meeting rooms, I get the plays. I'll be calling the plays out. And but when it get to the field, like like he said with the tempo, like I never had that to where I'm playing that fast. So just just me transitioning it from the meeting rooms to the film was the biggest thing for me. But other than that, though, I think I. I got it like a handover easily. Do y'all notice you watch football different now too? Yeah, definitely. Like when we watching college football games now, when we're watching NFL games, even in the locker room, we got the TV screens on. Guys aren't even like, wow, that was a great player. That was a good play. They're like, man, linebacker MA right there. Yep. Yeah. I'm watching, I'm like, man, Sarah took bad footwork there, man. Screw mm -hmm. the whole play up. You'll never casually watch football again. No. It's never. like watching film at all times. Never. So. Yeah. Theo, thank you for joining us today, man. It's a it privilege, a it's an honor, man. Pleasure. Thank you for listening to the third episode of the Lions Dead podcast brought to you by State Media, your home for anything Penn State related. Stay tuned for future episodes with other superstars like Theo as we continue to bring you the best Penn State coverage known to mankind.